Okay, Nina, it's so great to meet you. How's your day going so far? It's going fantastic. I've been doing interviews all day talking about this movie, so it makes me happy. So you're excited for Hell Hath No Fury then? I am. I'm really excited about this one. Yeah, so it's fun to promote something that you believe in. <laughs> well, before I start asking you too much about it and why you believe in it, um, tell me, did you see the finished project yet or are you waiting for the theatrical release? Okay, you did. Yeah, I did see it, yeah, so I know. Okay, so some of the people I had spoke with, like I just spoke with Joseph and I spoke with Dominique and, um, and Daniel and Jesse, but a couple of them had told me they had not seen it yet. So I wasn't sure if you were waiting for the big screen experience. Uh, do you plan on seeing it in theater still? Oh, yeah, we have um, a screening on the 3rd at the Lemley Theater here in, um, in, here in Los Angeles. So uh, we're going to, you know, have an official, you know, screening and everyone will be there. And so it'll be fun. You know, I've never seen it, you know, obviously on the big screen. I've just you know, so so I'm I'm really excited and to see how people react to it because I'm so close to it, so I can't really be objective. Right. So obviously your hair is not too long right now, but uh, let me ask you, what was the experience of getting it shaven like? Like the, I think I talked to Jesse about it, and he said, you know, it's not just that you got your head shaved, but it's not perfect. You know, they do it with the shears on purpose to make it uneven and things. So he said, you know, we you know we had to go go into it what yeah i mean they wanted to shave me but i wanted to use the clippers that they like the special clippers that they used back then i wanted to keep it as authentic as possible and then once they and i had images that i have found of what i wanted it to look like because i wanted to be as authentic as possible and back then you know very few of them actually had a perfectly shaved head you know um so you know it was more like uh you know it's like factory farming they just like went through them and just like had to get the hair out so they didn't get lice and you know so it was it was and it hurt like crazy using those clippers because it kind of rips the hair out so i got a little taste of what it was really like you know and 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 especially with those french resistant fighters you know we shot it on screen so what they did is they they once they found out that the resistant fighters um had interacted with you know nazi officers they would uh strip them of their clothes so they're just in their lingerie uh that would sometimes write you know nazi sign on their forehead and then they would shave them and then they, they would have to do the walk of fame so they were marked for life you know basically so they couldn't find a husband or you know what i mean so everyone would know that you're a traitor so it was a, a very um <laughs> you know like the the shaving of the head and stuff didn't really bother me what bothered me was the inner emotions i was going through for these you know she was a french resistant fighter trying to do what was right and then she was punished you know like that you know it was extremely right. humiliating you know what i mean uh it was just excruciating it was uh an awful experience and then once the scene was done i was like oh my god my hair is gone like i didn't even you know what i mean i didn't even because they would do it on public they would do it in public so they were like you know and that's how jesse had set it up like there's people there so i got to get a taste of what it was like you know yeah the degrading and and yeah and just dehumanizing um this is this your first period piece that you've done no 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 um I, my first, you know, I did plays. I was like huge into plays. I studied in New York at NYU and then I did plays. And I did, uh, I played Malena Dietrich for six months. And my first big thing that I did was with John Malkovich and I played the first female pilot. We shot in Zurich um, uh, where, um, you know, it's 1930s and I fly, uh, you know, uh, Spitfire at the time. And so I do a lot of, cause I have a classic face. So I, I either play the badass, it seems to be, or the period pieces, which I love. I love period pieces. It's my favorite. Or, or a badass in a period piece. Uh, <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> so how much, how extensive is your research on, on period piece movies versus what you would normally do for a role like, you know, a badass role? Yeah. Um, well, it's, you know, I will wake up and I listen to 1930s music, French, you know, 1930s music. I would try to eat what they eat. You know, I, 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 you know, I would sit how they sit. I would drink tea, how they drink tea. I, 
I really have to, you know, they walk different, they talk different, they act different when they meet men. They, you know, the whole demeanor was different back then. So, you know, just for, from a physical aspect, it's very different. And, um, and then from a mental, you know, um, you know, she was a bit of a victim, my character, you know, um, so it's, it's extensive. I go full out, you know, I'm method all the way. Um, I wanted to live on the set. I, you know, no cell phones, no emails. When I work on a movie like that, I don't want to drive anywhere if I don't have to. I just want to stay in the bubble and immerse myself as much as I can, you know? So I, I go, I go a little nuts. So Joseph, uh, Joseph, uh, Jesse had mentioned that, you know, there was kind of a family feel on set and everything yeah. was, you know, really contained based on everything that was going on yeah. at the time. Um, do you feel like that helped you with your uh, camaraderie or your chemistry with the other actors on screen? Oh, yeah, it was wonderful <laughs> because it was a very small, tight set. You know, I could only be around, you know, the actors that I had scenes with because of COVID. And we became super close and everyone, because there was nothing else to do, you know, normally you go on hanging craft service, you know what I mean? You, there was no hanging out, you know, there was no extras. There was no, so everyone stayed in a bubble and our bubble was with my co-stars. So we became super close. And also the cast that Jesse chose, they're all like method actors like myself and wanted to go, you know, go the full length and they wanted to rehearse and they wanted to, you know, um, we just kept the focus on the movie the whole time, which is very rare. And uh, it definitely felt like family. And it's such a, um, especially for me, she's so vulnerable, you know? So they all kind of wanted to protect me a little bit because I'm running around in a slip and get thrown and beaten up. And, you know, and everyone was very like, um, <laughs> kind of protective of me, which was nice because, you know, she was, uh, she was a little vulnerable and, and, and the state that I had to put myself in, I wasn't really thinking clearly, if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially if I you... wasn't really like, Hey, maybe I shouldn't be doing this or, you know, I was just so in it that I couldn't really think. And I had these wonderful actors and stunt coordinators and people kind of, uh, protecting me from, you know, doing too many crazy things. And, you know, cause as I said, I was just kind of in that other world you know i was there but i wasn't really there so did you do all your own stunts yourself obviously you got very immersed you know like you said you wake up you're yeah. you're listening to the music and everything but when it comes down to the actual shooting did you do everything yourself or did you have a double for any scenes no i do i try to always do everything myself and in this particular one my stunts and my marie's strengths are not physical it's mental you know what i mean so she was a little different from what I normally play because they normally have me, you know, use my physical strength. And in this particular movie, you know, I lost a lot of weight for her and I made her a little more, uh, you know, muscle, skin and bones, you know, because they were strong back then when they worked in the concentration camp, you know, they worked. So they were muscular, but they were skinny. So I wanted her, you know, to do that. Um, so I made her like that and, and um, uh, you know, she... She gets beaten up, but I don't get to beat anyone. You know, I'm the quiet one in the corner that you got to watch out for because I'm using this. This is my weapon, my mind, and uh, and not my physical strength. Do you think that this is the character that you've played that is the most layered like that or the most um, mental, uh, mentally driven uh, with like a powerful mind like that? Like you said, you normally are, ba are a badass. You know what I mean? You have the powerful body this you you lost weight for and really everything is centered around what's going on up in her head do you think this is the most like mentally driven character you've played yeah definitely it messed with me <laughs> it messed me up a little bit um you know all the research you know i had to do uh yeah i think i think definitely because she's so layered and she's so unpredictable and she's so strong she's a lot stronger than me you know, after studying what they did at Ravensbrook, you know, one of the worst concentration camps and what she survived that there was very few survivors. Um, I don't, I think I would have thrown in the towel, me personally. And Marie just had such a mis mission on what she wanted and, and, and inner strength that, and she was so brave. Uh, you know, 
you know, I, I have been in extreme situations, but not like that. And I think it just shows what the human mind can do. You know what I mean? We don't use our potential. And this woman found her physical strength, her mental strength. And I mean, she's just, she's just a beast, <laughs> you know, like, so I, I learned a lot from her, you know, her vulnerability is her superpowers. You know what I mean? If I was that vulnerable, I would just have given up, you know, and she was just relentless. You know, she was so brave, you know, like I, I wouldn't have the courage that she has, you know, I mean, um, so I have so much respect for her and I learned a lot from her and, you know, I, I took a lot with me from her. So do you prefer roles like this, like layered roles, like, or not even layered roles, but do you prefer roles that are in period pieces? Uh, because you said you've got the face for it or do you prefer the badass roles or are you looking to do kind of a balance going forward? Playing a badass in a period piece. <laughs> yeah, I guess we, we did. We, I did say that at the beginning. We, we could circle back to that. Yeah, so, uh, which I think Marie is a badass. She's just not your typical badass because she runs around in her little lingerie and, you know, um, you know, she, she is a victim, but she's a badass. You know, she has a lot of inner strength and that's what makes her a badass. But I prefer, you know, the more layered, the more complex, the more challenging, the more the part scares me. That's what I'm drawn to. Uh, playing like a sexy badass who is the tag along of some dude. I mean, I, you know, I'll play it and it pays my bills and I'm on set and I'm working and I, you know, I have nothing but gratitude in my heart. But what really gets me going is those parts because then I feel utilized. You know what I mean? I get to use everything of myself and just, just instead of just showing up and be like and saying the lines and I don't know, I can, you know, I can do that in my sleep. So I try to make it interesting for myself and I make, you know, try to give every character I work on, you know, layers and I try to do everything that I can. But someone like Marie is like, it's a, it's a dream for an actor, I think. You and know? it gives you a much bigger opportunity to test your and, and use your acting chops versus like you said, yeah. just standing there and supporting a male uh character yeah. um you you not only have the talents of acting you know you are you have music background you are you know multi-talented as an entertainer what was your initial i know that you know acting runs in your family but what was your initial uh, passion where did your initial passion stem from were you looking to act were you looking to sing or did you just want to entertain altogether well I've, i was an entertainer since i was a young young kid and i started as a ballerina in the dance world but very quickly i learned that expressing myself physically just didn't again i wasn't fulfilled i wanted more you know and then i i always loved music i i just wanted to express and I think I got more into music because the parts that I was playing as an actor, they were not fulfilling and I was always told what to do. And with my music, I could get up there and I could give everyone the middle finger and I was like, this is who I am and this is how I want to do it. And you know what I mean? I'm doing my thing, you know, and where when you work on great movies like Hell Hath No Fury with Jesse, with the director, he lets you, you know, he hires you to, because he trusts that you're going to, you know, bring whatever it is, you know, you're hired for your talent. So he let me do what I wanted to do, which is fun. But for me, it's not fun when I show up and you know what I mean? Everything is premeditated. And I was like, well, why are you hiring? You know, I'm just number like, it doesn't matter if you hire me or the girl next to me, you know, I'm not, I don't feel utilized. So that's why I think it got so into music because at least it was me. It was authentic. Uh, I got to do what I love, but then it felt like I was always playing the same character. You know, when I go out there on stage, it's the same character, you know, where, and then that to me got like, after six months on the road, you're like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's incredible. People are tattooing your lyrics on their arms. And I mean, I can't, you know, when people sing back your lyrics that you wrote and I mean, I can't even describe the feeling, but again, you know, everything becomes a job after a while. And the beautiful thing is with acting, it's always something new. You know, it's like a new challenge. And as I said, I like challenges. I like things that stretches me. I like things, you know, so I feel more fulfilled and utilized when I 
play great parts instead of going from city to city to city to city and doing the same show every night, you know? Right. Yeah. Now you, you kind of switched it up a little bit with Call of Duty. You did vo- like voice yeah. acting. Did they do, uh, did they model the character after you? No, the physically? character is modeled. Yeah, it's my liking. They use my liking. And um, again, it's so, so fun, you know, and uh, it's fun and people love it. And I'm shooting a, another video game next week. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. So, so do you do the voicing too, or just I the... don't do the voice uh, on these, just the liking. They use my image uh, because I have a bit of an accent and one, I play American a lot, but once they find out that I'm not, then all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, we can totally hear it. You know, so, so, and, and, um, a lot of the times, most of the times it's not the same person, which is so odd. They hire like a voiceover actor and then they hire an actor to do the likeness. That's really like interesting. Separate. Yeah. And I was like, well, well just don't have <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the same, the new one that I'm doing the same thing. They hired me as an actor to play, you know, the likeness of this character, you know, what- would you be interested in testing your chops out as a voice actor as well? Yeah, I've done, I do, you know, voiceovers and ADR and, you know, I, I, I've done voiceovers, but um, I'm not a voiceover actor, you know, there's those right. guys who, that's what, what they do for a living. And, you know, I, again, you know, I'm all about utilizing myself and I just feel like the voice, it's not my strength. It's the, you know, everything, the whole package you know so right. so i i feel like uh, if i just do voices i, I don't i mean I, I will do it and i'll i, I love it but not full time sure now um hell hath no fury is coming out on november 5th in theaters it'll be on bod on the 9th um, but before i wrap i want to make sure you have a chance to plug anything else that you might have coming in the future or you know at least uh share a website or your uh, social media for fans who'd like to find you Yes. I mean, uh, Instagram Nina Bergman, um, is where I post most of it. And then my website, uh, Nina Bergman.com. There's all the up updates. I have another movie come out. Um, they got picked up. We don't have a release date yet. We will have that soon called seize the night about a goth singer. It's a true story, you know, Requiem for a dream meets, uh, before, before, um, uh, what's it called? The Ethan Hawke movie before sundown before sunset. I know what you're talking about, but I yeah, can't think of what it's called either. <laughs> yeah, I just forgot. Um, so I, I did the music. It's a true story. I, I played this goth singer. So it's in the 90s, which I love, <laughs> you know. So again, a period piece. And it's just, um, it's a very special one. Like has like kind of like the crow kind of feel. That'll yeah. be fun. Um, yeah. So I have that one come out that I'm excited about too. Uh, that's next. That'll be fun doing a more recent period piece and yeah. one for like a time period where you were alive during. So yeah. that'll be interesting. Yeah, um, the songs, the music is, you know, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. I love Evanescence. I love all of the three doors, three days, three, anything with three in it. <laughs> Vans. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's fun. Um, is there anything about Hell, Hell, No Fury that we didn't touch on that you wanted to mention uh, at, as a last kind of word? Uh, for, for people to see, I just think uh, it's a, uh, I think people are going to be surprised because the trailer is a lot of action and it's actually not, you know, there's a love story in there. There's all these things in there and it's just a really beautiful, heartfelt story that I think is very important to be told. And it's, um, I think it's going to surprise people when they see it. It's really special. I think not, not because I'm in it and (laughs) you know what I mean? Sometimes you're a little biased, you know, I'm from Denmark. Denmark is the greatest country in the world, but not, you know, um, I think people are going to be surprised, uh, because it's, it's very special. I think it's really, it's really special. Like we all felt it on set. And I think it's trans, you can, you can feel that. And the story is fantastic. And I think it's Jesse Johnson's best work. 